Hello, my name is Claudia Solis Lemus. I have a PhD in statistics, and I will tell you today why I think statisticians are the data detectives of the 21st century. I was born and raised in Mexico City, where I lived with my parents and my younger brother. I went to college at Instituto Tecnológico Autónomo de México with degrees in actuarial sciences and applied mathematics. After that, I was admitted into the PhD in statistics where I did a master's in mathematics as well at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I want to do a parenthesis here to tell younger generations that you do not need to be rich or have a lot of savings to pursue a PhD. Most PhD programs in STEM um, do not require that you pay tuition. Admission into the program includes a teaching or a research assistantship that includes a monthly stipend and tuition remission. And that's how I was able to pursue a PhD in the University of Wisconsin-Madison. After that, I was a postdoc at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, and later was, I was lucky to be hired back as an assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Ever since I was a little girl, I had two passions, mathematics and mysteries. And this is an image of my hero, Sherlock Holmes, but I suspect that younger generations are more familiar with other detectives like Detective Pikachu. In any case, mathematics plus mysteries equals statistics, which is the degree that I chose to pursue. And for those not familiar with statistics, it is simply the discipline that has to do with anything related with data. And statistics solves mysteries of science. And I will tell you one example for where the Tyrannosaurus Rex was presented in an exhibition with feathers. And I don't know about you, but the idea of a T-Rex with feathers makes it look like a giant chicken and it's no longer very scary. It turns out that the feathers are not completely far-fetched. Dinosaurs evolve into the birds that we see today. And you can be asking, wait a minute, how do scientists know this? Well, statistics solve these types of mysteries of science. And by mysteries, or in this case, mystery, or what we denote a scientific question, to which living species are dinosaurs more closely related? And scientists cannot travel back in time to observe what happened in the past. So they need to rely on clues or limited information or data in the form of fossils, ancient dinosaur uh, DNA or bird's DNA. And I wanna again do a parenthesis to illustrate what is DNA very briefly. If we have a fossil, we can extract cells and inside the cell, there will be a molecule that is called DNA. This molecule encodes instructions for the cell. And we can think of this simply as a word written in four letters, A-C-G-T. We will have DNA for the dinosaurs and we will have DNA for the birds. And now we can do our detective work or statistical thinking, which for us involves a lot of computational work to calculate the probability that this dinosaur DNA evolved into the bird's DNA. And again, you might be thinking, okay, wait a minute, what do you mean by probability? So let's try a simpler mystery first. Let's imagine that I have a ball with blue and red balls, and I want to know how many balls I have from each color. If I can see the ball, then this is not a mystery. I can just count, and this is easy. But let's pretend that I cannot observe the ball, just like the scientists cannot travel back in time. And here, my scientific question or my mystery is I want to know what is the proportion of blue and red balls without looking into it. And let's just say that someone extracted four, five balls at random, and this is my limited information or my clues. With this information, I can do my statistical thinking and say that based on the data, we can infer or guess that there are four out of five blue balls and one out of five red balls in the ball. Now, let's go back to dinosaurs and birds. Let's pretend that the ball is all the genes from the dinosaur, the DNA. And the balls that I do observe are the genes that I can get from the fossils. So that we cannot observe every genes, only the ones that survive the passing of time. And just for the example, let's pretend that I can color the genes blue if they agree with genes in birds and red if they don't. This is my limited information or my clues. With this information, I wanna answer the scientific question or my mystery, what proportion of genes are shared between dinosaurs and birds? If they share many genes, then we can think that they're very closely related. We can now do our statistical thinking based on the genes that we do observe. We can infer or guess that birds like dinosaurs share many genes and therefore are closely related species. So to sum up, statistics solve mysteries of science whenever we have a scientific question for which we cannot observe things directly, either because they are in the past or they are in the future. Maybe we can estimate what is the life expectancy of the sun. We cannot see into the future. Or, or maybe it's also challenging because I want to measure the whole population to know the efficacy of the COVID-19 vaccine, but we cannot measure 8 billion people. So we only have access to limited information or clues. 
And it is with statistics that has mathematics, probabilities, and inference that we are able to complete or to answer the scientific question that we want. And this type of work, like I said, involves a lot of computational work, giving talks and presentations to different audiences, and then works with teams of interdisciplinary people. So we don't do this work in a vacuum. So I wanna thank the graduate students and undergraduate students that work with me, helping solve the mysteries of science. Thank you.